welcome to this presentation of the Rotary Club of North Bethesda, Maryland, USA. Our club was established in 1974. We meet every Friday morning at 7.45 a.m. and we often invite guest speakers to give presentations on all kinds of interesting subjects. Please contact us through our website at nbrotary.org. And thanks for watching. Uh, Carmela, can you introduce yes, our certainly. speaker today? Uh, our speaker today is um, B.J. Skinner. Uh, B.J. is a member of the Pearl Rotary Club in Annapolis, Maryland, and is currently the district <coughs> grant committee chair. So I turn it over to B.J. Good morning. I'm Good morning. Very, glad Good morning. To, uh, very glad to join you, and I appreciate the invite. Um, the district uh, Rotary Foundation chair, Geetha Jayaram, she was our last year's go uh, district governor really appreciates getting the word out about grants. So I'm going to talk a bit about them and really encourage your club to submit some applications. Is there a possibility to share the screen? Okay. And what we're going to be talking about is the district grants, both local, local, I'm sorry, both global and what we consider the community grants. There are two types of grants that use district designated funds. And I'll go over a lot of these terms as I as I come through this presentation. Um, the first is the community grants. What we're talking about is community grants, which are a little bit small, and we're going to focus on them a bit. They're small, short-term humanitarian projects. Global grants are larger. They have a minimum uh, budget of $30,000, and they're often multi-year. Both these grants can fund local, district, and international service efforts. Um, and it'd be great again, tying to Norway, something Norway's done if there's a club over there. Um, they can do vocational training, community assessments, and we'll talk about those a bit, construction and renovation. The DDF, it's called District Designated Funds, for community or global grants cannot fund a particular political or religious view, uh, fundraising activities, they can't purchase land or buildings, Rotarian events, Rotarian events, and they can't have unrestricted donations to a beneficiary or cooperating organization. You actually have to come up with a project to work on. Um, and I'm going to first talk about where the money comes from. We're going to, each Rotarian, hopefully you, everybody contributes, you know, at least a $25 per year, because we like to have every Rotarian every year contribute to the annual fund of Rotary. And um, if, if it's not familiar to you, we can actually help get some the the proper forms to get credit for that. But once you contribute money, to and every Rotarian contributes money to the annual fund, hopefully, it gets aggregated across the district. And it goes into Rotary International and they hold on it to it for three years and kind of they work on the interest. They they get their funds kind of from the interest. But after three years, that money returns to the district. And that's where we get the money that we can use for the grants. Half of the money goes to this, what we call district designated funds. And it's money that now is given to the district to use for grants. And those grants are gonna be either district grants, the local small community grants, or the global grants. Half of the other money goes to the world fund. And that world fund again matches the DDF. It's a kind of it's a bit of a complicated process, but we get more of that money back to the district for to support our global grants. So it's very important that we actually first donate into the annual fund so we get money back. And we'll see that again in three years. So both the DRFC, um, Geetha and, and the uh, um, district governor, Sean, really want all clubs to participate in the grants. So we will use this money. We try to distribute it against the applications at various clubs. And I don't think your club has issued an application that I recall. 
So we're really trying to get every club trained. There's special training that, that Gaitha does. Um, and then we actually, we are also limiting the amount of money per grant that can be given because it was, what we've seen is happening is certain clubs, Metro Bethesda, they're very experienced at this. And so we instead want to distribute it to a lot of grants and a lot of different clubs. So there's a limit per grant of this district de designated funds, DDF, of 5,000 per grant per participating club and a max of any grant. We also really encourage clubs to get together. So join another club. A good example is join Metro Bethesda because they know how to do grants. They can also help train you in the grants. So join with them and we would give 5,000 to each club. We would match 5,000 to each club, both Metro Bethesda and North Bethesda, for example, in a, in a grant application, up to about 15% of the available DDF for the year. This year, that's about $13,500. Next year, we expect that to double. So again, people were really good three years ago about donating to um, the annual fund, and it's coming back to us now next year, and it's going to be, we expect a, a considerably more money to distribute out to our various clubs. Any deviations from this amount, if it's in a unique example, matter of fact, we gave extra money to a Ukraine effort. So that can be approved by the DRFC. The next slide. Mm -hmm. So again, the, the money we've got is DDF. We want to give it away. We want to use it this year on the um, local community grant side. We had about 80,000 and the same thing is going to go to the global grants. The community grants have a specific application period. Every year, it's one March through 31 May. And it's done through DACDB. Hopefully, most of you are familiar with DACDB because that's where it keeps, you know, Rotary keeps all. I assume you also, if your club uses DACDB for um, keeping track of members and stuff like that. DACDB, yeah. that thing, that's good. <laughs> and it walks you through it. It's, it looks really complicated, but the DACDB module actually walks you through each thing that you have to do, which example is, you know, who, who's sponsoring the club, what club, what members are going to be you know, in charge of this, where you want the DDF sent to. So it really walks you through. It's, it looks complicated, but it's not that bad at all. Um, and there's, there's a lot of training materials both in DACDB, on the mechanics of how to do this. There's also training materials on my rotary. If anything, there's an abundance of training materials. So as you've got, to, there's a couple areas that I can help you uh, focus on to work through the application. There's also um, terms and conditions and guides for both the district community grants and the global grants. Again, there's a, a wealth of information. Some of it's really necessary to read, all of it, can be overload. So we've got questions. Um, my grant committee, which is posted on the um, district website, all the members, you can reach out to me or any one of them for advice as you develop it. And even though the, the period is one March, start looking at you know a global grant or a, a local grant, community grant now, and just start working that because it does take a little time and effort. The global grants, are actually an ongoing process. They're accepted anytime in my Rotary. So you actually have to go to the My Rotary website, go to the Grant Center, and that again walks you through step by step uh, each of the items, and and we'll go through some of the items that they have to you have to refer to on both the community and the global grants. Um, again, a wealth of training. Uh, the global grants are much more involved, much more intense. So the community grants is a great way for your club to start working with a service project and getting money from the district to help support that. Do remember that DDF, district de designated funds, are matching funds. We match what your Rotary Club and other Rotary Clubs are contributing to the grant. So they're not just money that we give. So you do have to do some of your own fundraising and then we will match it dollar for dollar. The grant requests and applications must align with a focus area, 
And again, there's tons of material in my Rotary and DACTV on that. There's a two documents, one for the district grants, one for global grants on the terms and conditions. They've separated them out. And they're, they're pretty self-explanatory. We have District 7620 uh, guidelines. Uh, Sean this year is focusing on community, um, uh, no, uh, economic development. So his priority for grants, both global and community, were for economic development. We're still working with Geetha's priority, which was maternal and child health care. And Dolores for next year may have another priority. And we take that into mind when we look at the grants. And of course, we also look at the four-way test. For the district grant guidelines, those are, the, again, the smaller community grants. There's actually a grants committee. Again, the names are all, um, and I think our email addresses are all on the, on the uh, website. There's six Rotarians. They're throughout our district. We try to balance it from both large clubs and small clubs. Uh, both city and, and Willowmore County. And those members, we advise on grant development. So if you've got an idea and you're not sure which uh, focus area fits in, or even if it fits a focus area, reach out to one of us. Uh, we review the applications when they come in. Uh, we score the applications and we'll go through it. It's actually on a, on a one to six in four different areas. And I'll talk about those four, four different areas um, in a minute. And then we recommend, based on the application, we recommend uh, funding the project for the district community grants. On the global grant side, we actually, again, we will help. You know, if you've got questions, you want us to review your global application, we'll do that. But they are actually approved by Rotary International Grant Committee members and they're much tougher. So it's again, good to start out with a district community grant uh, to get your practice, to get some of the ideas in mind. Um, they are much more formulaic than we are. But again, the same, a lot of these same things are gonna be touched on on both of them. The earlier you get your grant in, again, it starts for the community grants, it starts one March. The earlier you get your grant in, the more time we try to look at them and give you feedback before we actually evaluate them at the beginning of June. So again, we want them to be successful. We want to actually cultivate. We'll say, hey, maybe your budget isn't clear. We're really not sure what you're asking for. Or we don't see a partner that you really kind of, it looks like you need. Um, we also, um, there's also a Hanson Grants, which I'm not going to talk about much because they are actually a special grant given by um, Hanson family. Uh, from our district that is used for global grants for basic education and learning. And those grants are not matching funds. Those are just given. So it's something um, if you've got a basic education and learning, um, and that's, we're talking about, you know, rudimentary uh, reading and math mainly. Um, that's a special category. Reach out to our uh, committee and we can also help advise on that. But that again is starting with a global grant I recommend starting with the um, district community grants. We generally get more applications than we have funding. So it's a competitive award. So now next year, again, I think we're going to have, we're going to, we're excited about the, the funds that are coming in next year. So that's, that's a great year. We're going to probably be more lenient because we're going to have enough money to give out to a lot of starting grants. So this is a great time to start looking at that to, to plan you for next year. Um, RI does prefer, prefer active involvement. So it's, the idea is not just to give money to a, an organization that's, that's doing well or a school, but to actually have some involvement by Rotarians, some involvement by the clubs that are, that are proposing the grants. And we're gonna actually walk through some of these guidelines now. Uh, one of the first things is the project objectives. Every project needs to be thought through quite, quite extensively. Uh, we need to see on your application, definitely in the district side and on the global side, a clear statement of the need for the project supported by community input. 
You know, where did the idea originate? Who was involved in the concept? Who was involved in the solution? The district community grants don't require a formal community assessment, but we should see community and benefit input. For example, if you're going to tutor uh, third graders in reading, where did the idea come from? Did, did you reach out to the schools and the school says, hey, we need some help you know, in third grader reading where they're not up to the fourth grade level, which is a very important standard. Um, we'd like to see what, what schools you went with. And just, again, simple statements. It's not very detailed. Now, when you get to the global side, there is a formal community assessment that the local Rotary Club has to lead. And let's say you're doing an international project in Nigeria. You know, where did, the, where did that come up with? What the community has to be, in, like, let's say it's the same idea. We want to help young students get up to a reading level. We need to see that community assessments, who was involved in that, what schools were involved, what, what other you know, organizations are helpful. And very often a third party organization is used. Matter of fact, I would say on most of the grants, and that's true on, on both the district side and the global side. Very often we, we do um, have reputable you know, third party organizations. Uh, Montessori Schools is one of the examples of one I'm working with right now. Uh, so, and that's that's great. Matter of fact, that helps facilitate because those are the ones on the job or on the ground that can do the work. But we want to be sure you're not, you know, starting with a solution that's looking for a problem. And very often someone says, oh, I know they need, you know, bikes. Well, you know, that's great. Where'd you get the idea? Why? Okay. Getting much more formalized on the, on the global side. The application needs to um, identify the focus area and discuss the relation to our, our district priorities. Now, when we first started out, we were literally doing benches, you know, benches in a park, which is a beautiful idea. I personally love them, but that's not what Rotary International and, and what our district is now funding. You gotta clearly define the, goal, uh, the goals and then they, how they respond to that community need that you've identified and include supporting information. Um, and there's both, both in the global and DACDB, there's a way to add attachments, same thing on the global side. But don't refer to outside links because we only review what documents are in front of us. On the design and management of the project, we should see a detailed work project. We'd like to see the project pass listed out. We'd like to see the timeline of who's, and then who's doing what. Um, it may be that the Rotary is just managing it and reporting, but it's actually being performed by another organization, a school, for example. And that's great. We need to see what they're doing and a commitment letter from them, from all third parties. We need to see a letter from them saying, yes, you know, we're going to be doing this. And this is what, what parts we're doing in this project. One thing that's really important is we strongly uh, urge local ownership, local training, buying locally, and local contribution. And again, it could be a small contribution, but we want everybody to say, okay, we, we've got some vested, uh, something invested in this, this effort. Um, and again, all this should be uh, built into the work plan. Uh, a good example of local um, ownership and training and, and buying locally is there was a proposal this year of, of uh, buying bikes from the local Walmart here in the U.S. and sending them over to a small uh, community in the middle of Africa. And we're like, that just didn't make sense. It doesn't support what Rotary wants. It doesn't support our, in, our, our district because it's not sustainable. It's not, we're not, we're not here to help our local area in, in this project. We're trying to give bikes that could be used and sustained over in another country. And so it just made sense that, that, that if they just bought locally, that project would have worked. Note that the projects cannot uh, commence until the notification of award. And this is again for both district and, and uh, global grants. So for district grants and community grants, one July is the earliest that your project can start. I don't know if you have a foundation, but very often foundations run their own competitive process and they may start early. Well, for the for the grants, they cannot start 
at all until 1 July for a district uh, community grant. And same thing for the global grant, can't be in process. Um, and then for a the district community grant, they must end by May 15th of the following year. So for example, the, the grants that were awarded this year, we, they have to end and report sent, and we'll talk about the report in a minute, by 15 May of 2023. Global grants can go multi-years. They have to report on, on the schedule, but they can go multi-years. That's a big difference. The application also needs to identify all participants that I mentioned for successful implementation. We definitely encourage clubs, clubs to work together. We definitely encourage you to work with a, a reputable organization. We actually will check with like Charity Navigator to check on the organization, just a quick check. For international projects, even on the small district community side, we need a local Rotary Club involvement because otherwise we're really not sure what's happening in China. It's very hard to manage a project, even a small one in China from sitting here in the U.S. Include the letters of participation from all organizations that are working and the International Rotary Club. Um, a good example that we had is someone proposed here to plant a butterfly garden at a local school. Well, we needed just a quick letter. Again, it's very simple. We're not, not very detailed. It's actually pretty easy. But we need a letter from the school saying, yes, we will give you property on this corner to plant your butterfly garden. And that actually was a very successful project. The next is impact and sustainability. The application should delineate the particular outcomes with supporting data to verify what you plan on doing. We like measurements. We love numbers, um, evidence-based and data-driven. For example, a project to plant six wells or to dig six wells over the, over the uh, eight months or install 10 solar panels certify 80 students by a local technical college. We like to see those numbers. It makes it easy to say, okay, this is impactful. It's measurable. We look at the breadth of the impact. So the more beneficiaries generally will score you a little bit higher, although it's not dispositive. Um, do include secondary beneficiaries. An example of that is we're going to teach 10 teachers, but then they're going to teach 300 female students over the next year. That's a very impactful project. Sustainability is a very big issue. It's defined by Rotary as a project that provides long-term solutions for the community problems that the community members themselves can support after the grant funding ends. And this again reinforces why we really focus on local procurement and local involvement. The application should include commitments from the participants of what they're gonna do afterwards. When the grant money goes away, how are we going to keep this project going? Um, if we're providing uh, books to a school, you know, who's going to maintain them in that room, you know, for the following years? And again, quick one or two liners. This is not really, it, it may sound very involved, but really it's, it's not for the, especially for the district grants, it's, it, it can be done pretty easily. One thing, the district will not fund a project year after year, the same project. But if you say, okay, we successfully implemented this small library in this school, but we're going to go up over here in this community, that we will look at and do. Financial feasibility. Um, there should be a budget, and this is both required in the district community and the global grants. It's got to, um, we recommend including attachments. We want to really see the vendor quotes. That really helps us uh, to say, yes, you've looked at it. It's valid. The project is, is reasonable and works. Um, we prefer competitive quotes, three that you've looked at. We don't have to see the three competitive quotes, but say, hey, these are the three. And we can do, some of this is internet searches. Um, uh, again, the, the garden, the butterfly garden. They actually just had, this is where, you know, the standard, um, Butterfly bushes came from, or we got it from the local Home Depot. This is the price. Explain why the source is recommended. It was close, whatever it was. The funding sources include, by the way, both your Rotary Club amounts, other Rotary Club contributions. Individual can contribute an amount. 
and wherever else, or um, we don't ask the beneficiary organization to contribute. But the only things that are matched, again, is the foundation, either the Rotary Club or the Rotary Club Foundation's contributions. Those are the amounts that are actually matched. Okay, and that's where you get that DDF. So if your club contributes 1,000, we'll match it with 1,000. So it's a $2,000 grant now for an effort. If you're asking for DDF for community grants, again, include it in your proposal and you'll see it in the budget. You just walk through and say, okay, DDF matching. For global grants, it's very important you reach out to either one of our team members or the DRFC, Geetha Jerem, um, to see if there's money available. Because there's a lot of commitments, there's a lot of draft global grants, but they've got to ask if there's money because often the money runs out early. So the application should also demonstrate that the costs are reasonable in relation to the outcomes. You know, we're not over, over buying something and um, identify the things that are being done by volunteers. If some of the work is you know, being done by volunteers, that really expands you know, what can be done and makes that grant much more uh, valuable. Remember, we can't do something that's already in process. And this is also very important, and I came across this just this week. Only 50% for a district community grant, you only get 50% of that matching DDF upfront upon award. So let's say it's a global grant, it's a district grant of $1,000 that your club contributed. District DDF, <clears throat> excuse me, is gonna be the other $1,000. Upon award, and that's usually mid-July, you get $500. You'll get the final $500 when you submit a uh, global grant. Oh, I'm probably moving past. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. Um, I'm going, that's the main things. I just saw the time is running. So um, one of the things is, we again, we'd like to see your, your club um, do a grant. I'm going to just mention final reports, and we just talked about that real fast, is you've got to have a final report at the end, in this case, for the district by May 15th, have all money spent, and actually kind of say, this is what we did. We actually worked it. We can... We'll accept some deviations. They got to be reasonably related to what's being happening um, with what your original intention is. And again, um, we'd love to work with you, see you guys submit a grant next year. Uh, reach out to me to, to um, because hopefully this wasn't too uh, detailed and, and we can work with you to get something moving. Thank, and thank you, BJ. I appreciate the discussion and the talk. If anyone had questions afterwards, I'm sure you can hang out a little few minutes and Absolutely. ask, but very informative about how we can get our money and, and put it to use through the district and through the uh, International. Um, without much else to say, uh, I'm on a short leash, my, leash myself, so I need to close the meeting at 8.30 and we are out of time. And thank you very much again for everyone's time. Yeah. Uh, yeah.